everyone and welcome back to Unverified Accounts Pod. Um, we didn't get to finish off our conversation last week, so here is the rest of the episode. Thank you for listening. Um, as someone who cries a lot, you would think that's how I handle my emotions, but <laughs> no. it's not. Um, I have a really bad tendency of just like holding everything in um and just not acknowledging my Mm -hmm. emotions and just trying to like set them to the side um and I I feel like that's why like we were talking about earlier um like how have you like disappointed me or whatever and I'm like I really don't know because I feel like I I don't allow myself to like acknowledge my emotions so I don't know Mm -hmm. Like, I think about stuff months later, years later. Like, it took me years later to realize stuff that happened freshman year of college. Mm -hmm. And I I knew that it happened, but I didn't, like, I was protecting myself. So I wasn't allowing Mm -hmm. myself to, like, fully know what had happened. And um, so... And I also feel like I've never had like a really good like safe space because when I would try to talk to my mom about stuff, like it was always like my fault or, you know, like mm-hmm. it was just never like, I feel like she never took my side. So I just learned to just like keep everything in. I would let everything build up and then just end up in an argument or like about to like having a screaming match with somebody and crying because it's not even like their fault it's it it might be that one small thing that they did but really it's the the build months and tons of other stuff that happened before then that I've just been letting you know slide by I feel that because my mom and I didn't realize but my mom would always be like you hold everything in when you're not here and then when you get home you take it all out on me and I'm like, well, girl, yeah, because you just irritated me more. <laughs> I don't want to clean my room. I, I want to go out and you're not letting me. You just took my phone. Yeah, I'm about to go off on you. But <laughs> sorry, hopefully y'all understood that whole sentence I just said. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I think that's a thing, too. Like I like I said, I hold in my emotions as long as the lights are on and the audience is there. Emotions here and I'm good at like acting like I'm fine and I'll just be like I'll crack jokes with people like I'll gaslight somebody like (laughs) am I really fine or am I making you think that like if somebody cracks a joke even if it doesn't hurt my feelings I'll be like or did it am I just going with the flow to make you think that I'm okay I'm so it's bad like (laughs) but yeah I hold things in too so I definitely think we're alike in that sense but Hopefully, I'm a safe space for you. I mean, you are now, but back when I was younger. I know know we're talking about back then. I just hope that, you know, you can drop a couple tears. I would always be like, why are you crying? And I would just say, I don't know. Mm. Okay, so what was the most difficult part of your childhood? Jeez, oh, peace. Um, I honestly, I really don't know. I don't think my childhood was, I mean, I guess it was difficult now that I look back on it, but I didn't really, I don't know. I just didn't really, I think, I, you know what, I guess, um, I would say the most difficult part and probably the part that kind of like, I would say shaped my way how I deal with friendships the most is my childhood best friend. Um, Mm -hmm. I had expressed to my mom, like I didn't like the way she treated me when I was younger, blah, 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 blah. My mom was like, well, you have to be friends with her or else no more dance classes, no more summer camp, no more swim lessons because we did those things together. So I stayed friends with her 
even though she would just like boss me around and like we had to do everything she wanted to do and if I was better at her than something like we took crochet and knitting lessons we took knitting lessons together then yeah. I became better at her than knitting so we switched to crochet and then she didn't like that I was also better at her than crocheting so we stopped Maybe I'm taking just classes better. all together um and it was just like I don't know and she was a only child and my dad was like I don't know my dad always seems to be like fill in the gaps for the dads <laughs> that aren't there somehow. that are <laughs> well so, give me his number like not <laughs> You can show up to the house and be like, hey, look, hey, look. I could. Come I on really in. Could. I could. I really could. Um, so I feel like that's like a really big one. So it was um when we got older, like around middle school, I think it was one summer like family vacation that I I wasn't gonna be there to audition for dance classes. So they just put me in because we had to audition every summer to be placed in whatever class they thought I, we would be best for they would like judge us or whatever right um and I wasn't there so they just put me in whatever class and so we were in different classes that year and that's when I started to notice a shift in like her kind of like not even acknowledging my existence like then it was like okay I would only see her birthdays and Halloween and like mm-hmm summer camp started becoming awkward because she just like wouldn't talk to me like when I would text her like we wouldn't hang out anymore Mm. um and then all of a sudden I wasn't invited to any birthday parties except like her 16th um and it was just like I just didn't have a friend anymore I went to having someone I would do everything with Mm -hmm. and like not having a friend at all And I feel like I was really, really hard on myself about that. And I was already being bullied in school. So I just like felt really, really isolated and like depressed. Um, Mm -hmm. But that was, it was just like rough all around. So I feel like that was probably the most difficult thing in my childhood. Um, But yeah. It's funny because as soon as you said friendship, I was like, dang, that's literally because I couldn't think at first. And I was like, the only thing I could think of is like friendships. Like for me, being an only child, I think sometimes I tend to gravitate more heavily towards people than I should because if you don't have any kids at home. Like even though obviously siblings fight and all that, but you still have that. Now, obviously there are some siblings who just never get along and never like each other their whole lives. But for the most part, you love your siblings, you're going to fight, or you might not get along, or you might be complete opposites, but you have that person there. So I think for me, it was never making friends. Like I'm good at, like I've said in a previous episode, like I'm good at whatever room you put me in, I will be able to thrive and get along with people, have conversations, make somebody laugh, something. But as far as like, keeping a strong friendship that is the difficulty because I tend to be I don't know if it's an only child I don't know if it's just my personality I don't know if it's me having possible slight daddy issues (laughs) but it's like I tend to sweep a couple things under the rug or you know people please a little bit or whatever And then at a certain point, I realized like, okay, it's kind of gone too far. Now I don't really either can't be friends with them or they do something that's like, wow, you're doing this to me? Oh my God, great. Love that. Pull the knife out when you're done, would you? Mm -hmm. But that and then like also when I was younger, younger, like elementary, middle school, For some reason, it was easy for people to exclude me and things. You know, your parents always tell you, oh, they're jealous. So still to this day, whenever my mom's like, they're jealous, they're jealous. I'm like, the insecurity rising up is like, what are they jealous about? Like, what are you like? 
you're funny, I'm funny. Sometimes I think you're funnier than me. You're smart, I'm smart. Like, what mm -hmm. are you jealous of? So that was a part, like, I would get ditched sometimes or not invited and I would hear about it after the weekend and it was like, oh, you guys went out on Friday night or, oh, you guys had a sleepover. I that had was no the worst because it was like oh. a, around the time, you know, like Instagram and social media was happening for mm -hmm. us and seeing people post that mm. they were together and you're see, like, I wouldn't see the posts. I would mm -hmm. just hear because we are all supposedly all besties. I would hear them talking amongst themselves and I'd be like, they were at your house. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I had no clue. Or, oh, y'all went to whatever, like, cute. So I would be a little left out. But then at the same time, like, as I got older, like, in high school, I would still be, like, friends. But at a certain point, everybody goes to different schools or whatever. So we were still friends. But it got to the point where I felt like I'm always the one reaching out first. Mm -hmm. I don't reach out I don't really hear and it's still like that with people so I'm like do I give too much to where people just expect me to reach out first and it may not necessarily be that they just don't care maybe it's just they have an expectation when you do a certain thing over and over and it becomes routine okay they're probably like oh Michaela will call me at some point or she'll text me at some point but it's still like that but anyway so like you get to high school and everybody's at different schools or you might not see each other as much or whatever but at a certain point it's like I feel like I'm always the one reaching out first and then when you reach out you need something or want to ask me something and I'm just like okay I don't really feel like you're reaching is... out to like use me and not to actually yeah or like each other's yeah, or like just growing apart from people so my thing was I might have a strong relationship for a certain amount of time and then after a while, it just either fizzles out or something happens to where it's like, well, <laughs> that friendship is over, <laughs> just blew up in my face. And so, yeah, that's definitely been a difficult thing because I'm always like, I'm self-aware enough to know if the same thing keeps happening, it can't always be other people. Now, I'm not going to say that, oh, it's me because I do like I never contribute negatively to a uh, relationship but it's usually maybe not so helpful to the relationship like I might not say something and while that's not negative it doesn't help the relationship because now if you don't say something about something that bothered you a little bit the next time it happens or when something else slightly bigger happens my reaction is going to be bigger because I didn't tell them about this one thing that happened so now they're thinking I'm blowing up after this when it's really just like okay okay I feel like that's you know, superficial, or I feel like that's minor. Why would I freak out about this? And then it's like this, and it's like, okay, I'm going to try to express myself. And then it gets to here, and it's just like, yeah, you like, mm -hmm. <laughs> F you. Like, I can't keep doing that. So part of that is I am not helping because I'm not speaking up all the time or whatever. But sometimes I just hope that things just work itself out or. I feel like it's too minor for me to say something. And if I'm saying something, yeah. I have to stick up my ass or something, you know, like I'm just being so mm -hmm. critical or so, you know, uptight. But then it's like, that did bother me the way you spilt that water on my floor and it was still damp, you know, like, mm -hmm. but yeah, um, I would say the same as you. So it's both of us it's relating to friendship, which is funny that we're both friends now. We love it. We were made for each other. I didn't even mean to say that. Like, <laughs> and it, it is money long. That bothers me. Why is it pronounced money long? M-U-N-I should never be money. It should be muni. Money long, when it's spelled like that, just sounds crazy to me. She needs to change it. Muni long or something different because money and it's m-u-n-i girl get a grip i don't like it anymore like now i can't even Ugh. i heard her pronounce it over the radio or something or it was like an instagram reel she's like hey it's money long money are you crazy ew <laughs> immediate disqualification from a grammy you should never win another i don't know if she's won one i know she's song written for a lot of people but 
you should never even be in the running with a name like that spelled like that. So the next question would be, what is something you've done as an adult that you would be proud of if you were younger? Absolutely nothing. Your turn. Are you serious? You what have I done as an adult? Me. Yeah, but I wouldn't be proud of that because um, I would expect at a certain age that I would not be living with my mom. It was expected. Like, I'm not going to say I put an age on it, but did I think mm, I'm going to live with my mom my whole life? No, it was expected that at some point I'm going to get an apartment and move out. Then I'm going to have a house or a boyfriend and a husband. Like, okay, that's cute. I mean, I'm proud of myself for not being evicted, I guess, but I wasn't expecting that either. Big money me. It's like, nah. Um, other than that, proud of? I got nothing. So, Sydney, what have you done as an adult that you would be proud of? Um... I don't really, I don't really think I would be proud of anything that I've done. And you're gaslighting me and you are gaslighting me. Nothing. I can tell you, I feel like your younger self would be proud that you, I mean, obviously both of us expected to like get a degree and all of that. So, but I feel like you should still be proud of that. Number one, number two, you're doing what you like in the area obviously we're not at the point in life that it's like yeah this is exactly what I saw myself doing but I feel like there's a lot of things that you should be proud of you're out in LA I, on your I own. feel like mm, not really you crossed the de uh not delta aka I'm so sorry please don't kill me you're an aka I know some of that was more so pushed on you but but that wasn't pushed on me. That's what I wanted to do. My mom was trying to make me a Delta, but oh, okay. that's all I remember. She thing. wanted you to be great. Okay. Well, you're an AKA. You're like, but that's not stuff that I was necessarily wanted to do when I was little. Mm. I think my younger self would kind of like, if I feel like I gave up on a lot of things. And if my younger self, like, my younger self is not proud of that like mm. that's why I feel like I'm a disappointment and I'm having this whole identity crisis because I I don't know who I am because I've been doing being who everybody else wants me to be so it's like who am I what do I even like what do I even want to do because everything I'm mm -hmm. trying isn't working and no one wants to hire me but I'm good at everything and what's my thing because people keep asking me what's your thing and I'm like I don't have a thing I'm just here like I'm the one who mm -hmm. gets the job done if you want something done quick fast and efficiently you call me but like if you want me to have a thing I don't have a thing like I can crochet I can sew I can knit I can edit videos I can edit audio I can like I made a documentary like I can dance when I want to sometimes but like I just like I don't have a thing like and that's what I'm really frustrated by because like yeah I can make stuff but I, I don't I feel like I don't have a voice as a designer like I'm just I'm just here in this abyss so in conclusion neither of us are proud of anything we've done as adults I would say you know I'm proud that I'm still here because I honestly, I didn't really imagine my future that far. So that's fair. That's fair. I kind of yeah. had a moment like that because I was like, what am I doing? Because, chow. Yeah. So moving on, that's the subject for another podcast episode. Um, um what did you want to be when you were younger I feel like we talked about this a little bit already yeah we did like in past episodes yeah I wanted to be many things I wanted to be a dancer I wanted to be a backup dancer for Beyonce I wanted to be a dancer for Alvin Ailey I wanted to, yep 
passengers on my plane. <laughs> <laughs> Why did she do that? Like it was a nine eleven. The nine eleven tribute. This is a stick up. Yeah, stick up. No passengers on my plane. There weren't. And then had the it's a stick up, stick up. Um, and it was. It sure was. That fateful day. So this <laughs> is a great all narration. The, the lives of... lost. <laughs> R.I.P. to all the lives lost on September eleventh, two thousand one. Disclaimer, this is not us making fun. But Beyonce, why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> it made it worse because this is your husband's tribute. And you chose that. And you chose that song knowing, and then rehearsed it, mm -hmm. knowing that you were... <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <sighs> uh, yeah, so that stuff is really... It for me <laughs> you can go now because i don't even remember what i was really saying so you got it dude <laughs> the I can't up, get over that. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's what i'm it's saying like the passengers on my oh, plane my <laughs> that's why i'm like she didn't ever go that low before that you you're saying <laughs> the plane dipped and crashed is what it's giving and then this is a stick up stick up Um, well, you were saying you wanted to be many things when you grew up. Well, it Answer. was always something creative. That was always the thing. For me, I had so many, like, that's why I think I still struggle with direction because the things that I'm good at are in so many different areas. Like, it's not just creative. It's not just cerebral. It's not just, it's like basketball. To want to be a basketball player and then I found out how much they made in the WNBA and I quickly gave up on that dream because <laughs> at the time they were making way less than they do now and I was like babe I might as well teach second grade because they make it more than them you mean to tell me I'm a mm -mm. so I wanted to be a professional basketball player or at least like play in college and like go to you know the March Madness the tournament the NCAA tournament whatever gave up on that um I know. I Do you artist. remember when they like the WNBA players like with they would have like a player come and visit us? Like, does that ever okay. happen to you? Like a summer camp or like at school? No. No. Okay. Never mind. I'm jealous now. That was just my experience. Yeah. Don't talk to me about that. So. Sorry. Yeah, it was. Only thing close to that is I saw Rhonda Walker walking through Cornerstone one day when I was there, and I was like, oh. It's Rhonda Walker. That's about <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, I wanted to be a basketball player. I wanted to be an artist and like sell my own art or just create art and make art paint. Painting was my thing. Um, I wanted to be a neurosurgeon or neuroscientist at one point. <sighs> a lot. I For a split second, I thought about acting because I did used to kind of like acting and I feel like I just have the personality to be like and sing <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so yeah that's I think a problem for me is there's so many different directions whereas like I don't know if like there were anything else or any other things that you like wanted to do but I know for a fact like like you were saying always creative like fashion, dancing, art, all of that. For me, I'm just like, I don't know. It's so many different things I like to do. Like, I don't freaking know. So, yeah. Okay. Um, the next question is, what characteristics or traits did you have as a child that you still have? now very particular aka ocd um <laughs> stubborn like i if i think i can do something i want to do i don't want you to help me i just want to do it on my own i don't want help i don't ask for help i still don't ask for help um 
I'm still like, I've always been social around the people that I like, but I've always been like, when I was younger, I was extra shy and we called it being shy. But as I got older, I realized like, and you were the person who made me realize I had social anxiety because you used to always say you had social anxiety. And I understood what that meant because I have common sense. So, okay, social anxiety, like whatever. So, but I think you were the first person that used that terminology and I had never heard it before or never thought mm -hmm. about it. And I was just like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Like Sydney has social anxiety and you didn't have to explain it or describe it for me to understand. And, but you would say that all the time. And then like years passed and I was like, do I have social anxiety? <laughs> I thought I was just it's shy. still so bad though like when I went to the basketball game yesterday I was like I I was so happy that one of my coworkers was like oh let me know when you get here we can go on together because I was like I have to find yeah. my seat I have to walk up all these stairs I have to look mm -hmm. for the seat I have to that's how I used to be social in high with my coworkers. like I was like yeah. uh, uh I was like it's mm, not I'm as, gonna go home it's not as bad like certain things I think as I've gotten older I've noticed like okay it's not as bad and I think some of that is because I've kind of forced myself or there have been times where I had to just do it by myself especially like being the only child or doing certain things like as you get older and I try to be better but lately I would say in the last not even that long like the last maybe like two years I've realized okay I'm getting better but at the same time I was the same way like in high school if I wanted to go to a football game or a basketball game. I didn't want to walk in and have to turn to the bleachers at a football field and look and try to find my friends. And I feel like everybody's looking at me and staring and all that stuff. So thanks for helping me realize I'm socially anxious. Thanks. But yeah, I'm still like that. Um, but yeah, with the OCD thing, I remember... Well, I don't remember, but my mom and cousin had told me like when I was younger and the sock wasn't like, you know, the seam of the sock, if it wasn't straight across my feet, I would just cry because this was before I could talk. Now, if I was my mom, I would have been like, what type of child is this? And they figured it out and realized it was because the sock wasn't on correctly. And I'm still like that. I still have to have my socks laying across. I still like if I'm going upstairs and I know that like if it's somewhere I've been multiple times, like work or my house, somebody else's house, and I've been there, school, I know what step to start on with which foot so that I end on my right foot. I have done that for years. So in my apartment, I start with my left foot and I end on my right. At my job, the staircase, you start with your right foot. At my school, I remember all the staircases were the same except one, and I would so it's like, I'm still that same person and I'm still very determined to do things without help. So I would say they, those are the main two. Oh, also routine. This is why I'm like, am I slightly on the spectrum? Because my mom had to always tell me that something was going to happen before it happened or else I would just be like in a mood like as a toddler she would just notice like I wasn't crying or like but I would just be in a mood or just upset so if she wouldn't pick me up from school you better tell me if we was going somewhere you better tell me I'm still like that who's gonna be there what time what time are you getting there because if you tell me 10 and I get there at 10 and you're not there till 10 20 I'm gonna be upset because you didn't tell me this so yeah Um, I would say for me, I feel like I literally am the same. Um, I'm still very soft spoken and like quiet and reserved and like stay to myself. And mm -hmm. um, so I would say I'm still like my dad was telling me the other day, which like I don't see myself this way, but I'm I'm like, I guess that is true about me. Um, he was telling me about how we were at this one Jack and Jill event. It was like Black Family Day. No, it wasn't Black mm -hmm. Family. It was some Jack and Jill event. And there was like this rock climbing wall. And he was like, oh, what wall do you want to do? And it just like sparked a memory. I was like, oh, wait, I do remember this. So it was like, I used to love rock climbing. Like, why did I stop? <laughs> like, I used to really love that. And it was probably because of Princess Diaries. Um, but I was like, oh, I want to do the, the biggest one. I want to do the tallest one. And so we get mm -hmm. up there. 
And well, my dad was like, are you sure you want to do that? I was like, yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> so I, we get up there. Yeah. And the guy's like, oh, which one are you doing? And I was like, the big one. And he looks at my dad and he was like, are you, are you, is she like good to do this? And my dad was like, yeah, let her do it. And then he, my dad, I was like, because I remember like that whole thing, but I was like, I don't remember if I finished it or not. So I was like, mm -hmm. did I finish it? And my dad was like, yeah, you did it. Like it was nothing. Like you just went up there and came back down with ease. And I was like, wow, I guess like, he was like, he was like, I'm saying all that to say, like you set your mind to something and you get it accomplished. And I was like, it's always, the I big guess, things. I guess I do do that, but I never <laughs> feel like I'm accomplishing. I, I guess I don't see my accomplishment. Mm. I don't know. But I do always like fair. be like, I want to do something and I do it. And I guess mm -hmm. that is very true to, about me because I've done everything that you said you could would. do. <laughs> yeah. So that's that sounds about right about mm -hmm. you. Like even we were talking earlier about like you want better, like you want the biggest or the best or whatever. That sounds accurate because you're like, no, I want to do the big one. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're similar in that too. Like, mm -mm, I'm going to be overzealous. And then wasn't, I'm I wasn't even yeah. thinking like that though. It was just like, oh, like. No, I know you weren't thinking like that. I'm just yeah. saying like, when you look back, it's like, we might have these, like not necessarily overzealous, but like the biggest, the best. And it's like, that's why ugh, part of that, like when I was in uh, high school and I did, I took, bc calc so it's calc one calc two and at that time that's when i like kind of was having my struggles emotionally and mentally mm -hmm. so i kind of wasn't like doing the homework so i remember when we took the the ap test i passed the ap test for calc one so i got my credits for calc one but i didn't pass calc two so going into college they were like you can either take applied calc two or statistics whichever one you take I only needed one math credit that's why like still to this day I look back at certain things and I'm just like I probably could have finished college in like two years because I only needed one math credit I needed like a language and then so the biology and all that stuff I could have just taken over taken over the summer or like whatever mm -hmm. so I look back like oh but the reason I took applied calc two in college instead of statistics was because I wanted to prove to myself that I could that actually do, do calc two and not want to do statistics because statistics is easier even though statistics can be hard too and then on top of that I was mad because in high school I didn't take AP stats because everybody has said like how difficult AP stats could be and mm -hmm. senior year I was just like I don't feel like doing all that just give me statistics because if it was hard I didn't feel like I know I could do it but I didn't feel like you know who feels like actually doing all that stuff but I look back like mm, if I had taken AP stats that would have been my other math credit I would have gotten to college and guess how much of how much math I would have needed none zero mm -hmm. So I've always been like that. Like I want not even to necessarily prove to others. Like, yes, when somebody underestimates me, I love being underestimated because I know that I'm going to prove you wrong. So I always loved like in basketball, I love when somebody underestimated me. Oh, she's short up. Babe, I am a bucket. So coming into that, I'm like, no, nah, I'm gonna do calc two. And then when I started struggling, I was like, why are they getting it? And I'm not because math, is telling me that I should be getting it and I'm what's going on so yeah <laughs> not the most productive thing so yeah um I guess to end off our talk we'll just end it off with a nice light question on a more what were your favorite notes. yeah what were your favorite TV shows or movies growing up? You know how we talked about what I wanted to be when I was older? Mm -hmm. I completely, I keep forgetting about this. I wanted to be a spy. <laughs> like, <laughs> Not Harriet. No, I, I was thinking more Kim Possible, totally spy. Mm, got it. Those were like, my dad to this day knows how much I loved Kim Possible and I would literally sneak around Let's the house finish. like a stealth. It's 
Like if you text me and my ringer's on, it's gonna go do 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 do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I I was just being the most extra you could be. Like I used to scare my brother because I used to be able to hear him like about to come into our parents' room. So I would s- quietly run into the room, hide behind the bed, and wait for him to come and just pop out. <laughs> And I would we get wonder every why Jordy too. doesn't like to go out. <laughs> he's he's, he's like afraid. <laughs> he's afraid. He's afraid something will jump out at him if he leaves the house. Yeah, so those were my favorite. But when I was really, really little, I loved Dora. Like I had a Dora themed birthday. Um, yeah, Dora, Dora, Dora. And it's crazy because I don't know any Spanish. You would think. Side that. note, I do. I like to call myself bilingual. Side note, I did have a crush on Diego, Dora's cousin, <laughs> I when I was too. younger. <laughs> I also had a go crush Diego, on Go Diego, go. Like, when I, I love Dora, Dora was my home girl. That was my, that's the show I watched. Go Diego, go was like, you know, when the cousin comes over and you like, oh, that's your cousin. And I was like, whenever I would see Diego, I'd be like, oh, Diego, go, go, boy, <laughs> go. Um, yeah. Movies? Um, I don't really know. I feel like everything was just so popular when we were younger. I liked everything like Cheetah Girls, High School Musical, like, yeah. But um, I don't know, like, I don't really have a movie that I watched over and over again. Like, when I think of that, I know my little cousin growing up, she loved Frozen. So she -hmm. called it the, um, I forgot, she called it the something movie. It was not Frozen, could not call it Frozen because that's not what it was called to her. And we literally watched no it wasn't the Elsa movie we literally watched it on repeat over and over and over again to the point where I knew all the dialogue and I could act it out each character for you because I remember one day she picked her up after school came home and she was like I want to watch Frozen I was like "Mm, Frozen is broken right now we're just we're gonna have to watch something else Frozen is broken yeah so and then Jordy's dumb butt gonna come in the room no it's not it's right here I was trying to save us one day without oh that's what it was called the let it go movie so (laughs) I was like (laughs) the let it go movie yes but I never like I don't think I had like a movie that I loved like that where I would watch it over and over like I don't like watching things over and over like I watch because I remember it so vividly so I only watch it one time and then years later I'll watch it again you don't see because me I just realized in the last couple years I saw something like people who like to watch the same thing like I will watch the same episodes of shows one yes it's my favorite but I'll watch the same episodes I'll watch when the Lakers play only if they win and it's like a game LeBron like play really well I'll play the same game and watch the same game over like for me I I saw something that they said like people with anxiety do that because it gives you some sort of like you know what's happening next or mm-hmm. you know no because i'm the opposite me, i'm gonna watch it oh if i watch something and- new and it gets to like an uncomfortable point where like i started to feel cringe because the characters want something cringy i'm gonna let you know oh, right yeah, now i, I have on. not finished that show at all like it's you can go back to my netflix and see it's still stopped at that same point <laughs> for years no like, i do that too like once something is cringy i'll be like ill 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 and I'll try to make it past that. But like for me, things that I like, I'm watching it over and over. So for me, Parent Trap. Oh, like I love my, the Parent Trap. You had your time. You didn't remember. It's like, <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Parent Trap, Like Mike, Love and Basketball, Fat Albert with Kenan Thompson <gasps> and Kyla Pratt. Ah, that just reminded ah, me. I love Fat Albert so much. I had the original cartoon set like mm-hmm. on all the all the episodes and season on dvd and my cousin wanted to borrow it and i was like no my mom was like sydney you're gonna let her borrow it i was like no i'm not i was a very mean child um but yeah i wish i could cry while watching tv and then be sucked into a laker game or something like oh i'd love that um what else cheetah girls 2 drumline 
keep leaning up and like hitting my mouth on the mic. Drumline. So like all of these. So Fat Albert and Like Mike I had on VHS. And when I was like from like six to like seven, every morning before school, I would watch it. And then the next day, I'd keep watching where it left off the previous day. And then at the end, start it over. And then do it all over again. At the end, start Then when I got tired of that, I would switch to the other movie. So if it was Like Mike, I would switch to Fat Albert. If it was Fat Albert, I would switch to Like Mike. And then at that same time, I was a curious George girl. I love me some oh, curious Oh, I watched that every morning before breakfast. I loved me some curious I mean, while George. eating breakfast. Um, as far as like shows, like TV shows, I liked... Um, uh, I liked Keenan and Kale when that came on late night, babe. I liked obviously the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, all those shows. That's what Raven, Hannah Montana, all of those, of course. Um, trying to think of any other movies, but those movies are like my top. Like, I mm-hmm. always say I've seen better movies than that, but they'll never reach that favorite peak because. It's something about things in your childhood. You get some type of attachment and it yeah. just it never can hold a candle to it. So yeah, yeah all of those, what did I say? Parent Trap, Drumline, mm-hmm. Fat Albert, like Mike, Love and Basketball. I also those forgot top five that easy. My dad used to work for PBS. So mm-hmm. I watched a lot of like uh PBS growing up and Dragon Tales, hands down, my favorite. Like, I still Tales. watch it. I went to Dragon Tales Live. I've went to Sesame Street Live. I love Clifford, like because my dad worked Clifford. there. I got to like meet Clifford and all of that. So those are like no. big things from my childhood. Oh, no, Clifford! But I had this is so my favorite. I love Arthur. Dumbo. Oh, Arthur too. No, <laughs> Dumbo though. I I don't know why I love Dumbo. I can't even remember what happened, but I love Dumbo. But I'm going to tell you, like, my favorite childhood, like, kind of cartoon, like, little kid movie that I would watch over and over. The Christmas Barney. Where they were looking for the star for the Christmas tree. My favorite Barney I was the that. Hawaii Barney. No, the Christmas. They were looking for the, the tree topper star. I don't remember that one. For the Christmas. And I had it on VHS. And then, at like, you know, they would always sing and stuff. So at one point, they found, like, the little drummer boy thing. And then they were and they were singing drummer boy no i don't remember that you just made me remember though my favorite like christmas movie as a kid we had like it was a nickelodeon like special thing it was like dora blues clues and one other show i can't remember might i don't know what the other one was but it was like all i don't know but i I would want to watch that all the time Mm. so yeah i love blues clues too Mm -hmm. the doodle bops that was oh yeah where the doodle bops i loved that <laughs> and then at my grandma's house we had sprout so <laughs> <laughs> star and nina <laughs> they would host sprout and then i, I they taught you arts and crafts and then they would like during commercial breaks they would be there and then there was this one show about like a little puppet that i really liked oh the upside down show I used to love mm-hmm. that. I get with that. I love that because I I, like the, I ooh, really ooh, like ooh. weird shows. No, the Higley Town Heroes. <gasps> they were like oh, up there. My. The <laughs> Higley Town Heroes. Uh, they, you know they and that they, they were remade so it. Why? It's not called the Higley. It's literally the same characters, but instead of them being like little ovals, they're cubes now. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> and cancel the show. It's Sorry called something I... else. And I was, I literally posted on my close friends. I was like, did they just try to revamp the Higgly Town no, Heroes and give it a new name? Stupid. Like, because why would you, why would I want to see squares hopping up and down? No, that's literally the Lego movie. It's giving my, <laughs> no, they're crap. not like boxes. Like they're still one single shape, no arms. No, I'm just saying it's giving, mm-hmm. ew. Um, no. It Cancel looks like the show. Minecraft. I hate to, that's what I was like saying. I hate to say if I put somebody out of a job, get you another one because that show is not it. Um, What else? I like the little Einsteins, of course. It wasn't like a top favorite, but it was always on. So I was always watching. Mm-hmm. For sure. Oh, I love the Backyard Against, hands down. I was thinking that. I watched them, but it wasn't like a, I loved it. But the Backyard Against. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rest in yeah. peace to the creator. She died earlier <laughs> this week. I think I did see that. R.I.P. That was just dang. That just ugh, we're getting old to now where the people yeah. who made our shows aren't here. Anymore. She also, I think, was a producer or something on Totally Spies and The Winx Club. Yeah. Danny Phantom. <gasps> I forgot Powerpuff about the girls. Powerpuff yes. girls. Um, freaking fairly odd parents. I didn't really okay. watch that. I Danny Phantom though. Oh, oh I used to love Teen so Titans. Fine when he ta- when he changed into Danny Phantom when he had that gray hair. Oh, baby, damn, I be your Phantom. Amen. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Really I think we're just going on and on now. We so. are. Sorry, guys. Yeah. We really watch the same things though. Mm-hmm. You. Except I I used to love trading spaces, boys versus girls. Stop. <laughs> I wanted I to be on that show that when they were I making the room for me and my um my sister's brother, I submitted one for us so we could when they were making the when they would redo the rooms. Oh my god. Yes. Wait, did you ever watch this is Discovery Kids? Did you mm-hmm. watch Flight 29 Down with yes, Corbin with Blue? Corbin Blue? I I used to think he was I so loved- cute. Girl, and the drama started, they like, had my dystopian okay, type thing. Wait. Yeah. Last thing, I have a problem because for some reason I like the episodes that are like real dramatic. Like if I'm watching an ER show, it got to be like the worst case. Girl, <laughs> what was my favorite episode when he was trapped under the plane? <laughs> and I was like, is he? Gonna... Of course, gonna... he's gonna make it, but obviously, but is he gonna yeah. lose a leg? Is he gonna lose the mm-hmm. leg? <sighs> um, yeah. Okay. Well, I think we should end it here. Yeah, um, we're going on and on and on. <laughs> oh, that's a raven. Duh. Um, I said that. I just I didn't remember because that she ha, that's a raven and True Jackson VP. Reason I want to be a fashion designer. Oh yeah. my god! What was the theme song for True Jackson? Uh. Oh my God. Um, Cause I'm a true here. Um, from my head to my toes, it's so mm-hmm, real. Mm-hmm, and you know, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. fresh and clean. Just what I do. What I do. T R R U E A C K S O N V P. Okay. Okay. We got to stop. Kiki. <laughs> Kiki. Put me on Kiki TV. Kiki TV. I, you know, I almost cried because she came to our school and I waited in line and it got cut off like two people before me and then all of a sudden they were like I was literally on the phone with my mom like I'm like literally about to meet the hero like the person the reason I'm doing what I'm doing and I literally got cut off cut off um and then they were like actually we have some extra seats and I got to sit right in the front I was like you know god thank you because I would have been like Kiki I didn't, I was so nervous to ask her a question. I I didn't do it, but yeah. So. Okay. Well, um that is all that we have for today. I hope this was an enjoyable episode. Yes. Um uh, make sure to if you're watching this on YouTube or even Spotify to like, comment, give us a rating, something so something. we can get recommended for other viewers. Um uh, that's really important. Um yeah, and as always, you can listen to us on uh, Spotify, Apple. No, not Apple, because Apple still has beef with us. They're being um, fake. <laughs> yeah, Google Podcasts, Audible. That's what I meant to say. And then, of course, you can see our lovely faces on um, YouTube. Um, you can follow us on all platforms, I think, as, uh, what is it, Verified? Unverified, or unverified pod, pod or unver yeah or unverified accounts podcast yeah you'll find no us. it's unverified dot pod I think YouTube is the only one that's unverified accounts podcast so TikTok and that's why Instagram I said is or but go well, off. I was trying to be specific oh uh, sorry um <laughs> and you can follow me at Sydney Milan and you can follow me at mc dot C-H-R-S-T. And that is all we have for you. 
See you next time. Thank you.